Hey guys, it's EJ with Cryptography, where we unlock crypto for the masses. Today we're piloting our first crypto, 7 and 7, where we go over the last 7 days in under 7 minutes. This week we're handling June 25th, 2017. And what a week it has been. Going right on into the thick of it, we had the Status ICO this week. Uh, earlier this week on Tuesday, Status raised over $100 million in under 3 hours. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let that sit in for a second. A hundred million dollars in three hours. Uh, in total, their market cap is around $275 million now, if you consider all the coins that are in circulation and that they created. But a hundred million dollars in three hours, this is absolutely absurd. Congratulations to the status team. Uh, really happy for you guys and we're really excited to see what you guys do with it. But this good news was not entirely well received. There was a lot of controversy because Status ended up clogging the Ethereum network basically for a couple days. Um, there are so many payments, they were flooded with payments, so much so that uh, a lot of people didn't get their fill. And when it came down to it, there was actually a little bit more to it. They kind of let big investors come in first and participate in the pre-sale and kind of give them an address to send funds early. And it's seen as a kind of like shifty thing by uh, a lot of people in the space right now um, because it's against sort of the good spirit of uh, ICOs and the crowdfund uh, crowdfunding nature where everybody can be involved. If you want to learn more about status, check out our status in two minutes video, link in the description below. Uh, moving on, on another ICO, we have the Civic ICO. Civic is co-founded by Vinny Lingham, who is a pretty big guy in the Bitcoin space, has a pretty big following. Um, and Civic is aiming at sort of being an identity verification platform similar to Facebook. So when you go to a site and you just click on the link your Facebook profile or link through Facebook, that's what Civic's trying to do, except unlike Facebook who makes money off that and sells your data and you don't really have a choice on what other companies get to see and people get to see, this time with Civic you actually get to be in control of your data. So that's actually pretty cool, uh, pretty cool use of this blockchain kind of decentralized sort of network where you actually get to own back some of your data. Um, and yeah, so Vinny was able to raise about $33 million in the span of his ICO. Essentially, they did a really good job with a pretty marginal marketing. Tammy Camp actually did a really good job of writing up how they were so successful with uh, arguably no marketing expenditure. Um, if you want to read the full article, uh, check out the link below in the description. But to give you a quick summary, first off, Civic did a really good job of making their, their white paper, which is sort of their, uh, I guess, guide to what they're doing, an overview of their company. Uh, they made it really understandable. Most of the white papers that you read, like if you go and read the Bitcoin or Ethereum white papers, they're really, really technical. They're written by like physicists and really high level mathematicians. So they're full of algorithms and they are pretty confusing, uh, especially on the first read. Um, so Civic did a really good job of making it understandable and digestible by everybody. So they made it so that a large portion of the population could understand it. Um, on that front, they also made themselves really accessible. As I mentioned before, Vinny is pretty big in the sort of crypto community and he has a big following on social media and he kind of leveraged that to uh, the best of his, ab his abilities, making himself really accessible and responding on Twitter, creating a lot of medium posts and they even made what's called a telegram room. It's kind of like Slack or one of these other sort of chat channels um, where all the people who are interested in the project got to follow along and kind of ask questions in there. Props to Vinny, we're really impressed with what you've done and really hope to see Civic uh, Keep on, keep on with this pretty aggressive trajectory. Um, so moving on from there, we have we have a little bit of, I guess, bad news. Um, Coinbase suffered a flash crash earlier in the week, um, where the price of Ethereum dropped from three hundred and twenty dollars to about ten cents in about fifteen minutes, and that's pretty crazy. Uh, first off, this speaks to a little bit to the volatility in the space. I know a lot of people are chasing cryptocurrency because they see these really crazy gains. But it just speaks to like this is this is tech ultimately, and you got to be careful. And there's a lot of speculation here. Um, but this wasn't actually a really good representation of, of uh, Ethereum or cryptocurrency crashing in price because something happened. What actually ended up happening was there was a whale, or what we call uh, like a, just a big investor, who decided to sell off a lot of their Ethereum, like millions of dollars worth of Ethereum, all at once. And that's kind of a different way of doing things, or an interesting way of doing things rather because this person sold it all at market value, which means that whatever price the market dictated, they would say, that's just what it got sold at. And typically when people sell in large chunks, they do it over a couple days, weeks, months even, because they don't want to call it, uh, it sort of have these sort of downward pressure effects on the market where since they're selling so much, it actually causes the price to crash like it did in this case. 
And so the person ended up selling <laughs> several million dollars worth of Ethereum. And it's, oh, it's pretty tragic. In, in uh, about 15 minutes, it went down from $320 to $220 because there was so much supply and not enough people to buy. And from that point, the market kind of went crazy and all these sort of like uh, stop orders and like automations that are taught to just sort of sell if it hits a certain price to sort of limit your loss. All of these things just kind of snowballed out of control until Ethereum finally tumbled down to 10 cents. And this was all within, again, a 15 minute span. And Coinbase's response was to completely, and GDAX was to completely shut down services for the day. Good move on their part. It kind of uh, sort of stopped the chaos. Uh, they came back online a few hours later and they have since released a couple articles. Uh, you can check them out in the link, to, link below. One of the VPs at GDAX, Adam White, uh, explicitly said that Coinbase will be refunding losses to the people who were unfortunately on the wrong side of this. Pretty interesting uh, sort of story and just goes to show that you still gotta be careful with this space. Forecasting a little bit into next week, uh, on July 1st, we have Tezos. They're finally releasing their ICO. It, if you uh, have been following it at all, they pushed it back from June to July. Um, and we're really excited about this project. Um, if you are in the first hour of funding, you will get a 20% bonus. But do note that there is no cap on how much they're trying to raise, and they are raising for, I believe, two weeks. So there's a pretty long span. Don't feel pressured to really get in there in the first hour because chances are it might be a bit crazy. And really, like, sleep on these investments. But I will say, we had the opportunity to attend a talk by Arthur Brightman uh, earlier in the month where he led a panel of uh, other people in the crypto space. And any doubts that I sort of had about the Tezos project were kind of uh, resolved. He is a really well-spoken person and he is quite a brain. So this is definitely a project that you should do some research on. And if you haven't already, please check out our Tezos in two minutes video. Link is in the description below. And finally, rounding out next week, we are gonna have the EEA3 announcement. And I hate acronyms as much as you. So this is actually just a silly way of saying the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance. And it's kind of straightforward, but it's basically just a bunch of companies, big companies that have decided they want to partner with Ethereum and kind of help foster the Enterprise Ethereum partnership space and see how big they can get it to grow. And that three means that it's a third time that they're announcing members. Current members include Microsoft, Intel, Accenture, JP Morgan. Like it's a crazy list, like BP. I, I highly recommend checking out uh, the link in the description below to see all the other partnerships that Ethereum has fostered with these big tech and real, really finance companies. But the result of this is that we could see a tentative, uh, we could see a potential ETH, a jump in ETH price, depending on the, on the companies that are announced. Um, and all in all, it's good news for Ethereum. Take this uh, lightly because there's a tentative date for this week. Uh, we don't actually know when this will be released. Uh, that's all we have for you this week. Please stay posted for videos later this week. Here at Cryptography, we foster an open community. We really would love to hear from you guys. Please like, subscribe, and share this video. But most importantly, please comment below. We would love to hear your feedback. We're here so that you guys can learn. Cheers.